Hello, um, I'm Harry from the Shabocast. Um, this is the second of a series uh, going through the custom pieces and variations for each doctor. Um, as always, there is room for human error, so if you found something that I've missed, uh, do get in touch or comment below. Um, today I will be going through the second Doctor Patrick Troughton's costume pieces from his initial run spanning from Power of the Daleks to the War Games. Uh, firstly we have Pat's coat. Uh, there are a few variations here. Um, they're all black morning coats but each with slight variations. Now I believe there to be two different coats or at least styles of coat. I'm not sure if they're um, different natural coats or if the changes were just modifications to the same piece. Um, but there were definitely two main appearances to the coat. The first coat appears between Power of the Daleks and the Mind Robber. Uh, this is one is notable uh, because of the two cuff buttons and unusually for closure buttons. Um, uh, it has a few different looks, starting in Power of the Daleks, uh, with the coat pocket hanging loose. Uh, this was fixed up in the following story, and then from now on the coat stays pretty much the same. Um, surviving stories like the Highlanders and the Faceless Ones. Um, it's notable that by the mind robber, uh, two of the front buttons have fallen off. Um, now, there's a picture of the cuff buttons from Fury from the Deep. Um, now, on the left is the start of the next coat. Um, the major, well, slightly major, uh, change happens when we reach this story. Um, the coat um, almost instantly has a ripped right pocket. Um, but uh, this one is different because it has now got four cuff buttons and only two closure buttons and the pockets are neater if yet still tatty. Um, morning coats traditionally do not have pockets. Uh, they do feature one breast pocket but uh, these two pockets that feature on this coat and the variations of it were definitely added to the coat to make it a very unique piece. Also, the first coat's four buttons is unusual as traditionally morning coats only have uh, one or two buttons. There's a picture of the four buttons on the coat. And Replica is available uh, from Baron Boutique, but the breast pocket is inaccurate. However, I've found Baron very com accommodating um, in the past and I'm sure they can make any adjustments required. Uh, the other option is to buy a morning coat. Uh, they're not too expensive, well you can get some for a good price, and then just to add the two pockets onto it by hand, 1966 costume department style. Um, now we have the trousers. Uh, Troughton had one pair of tartan trousers, and though it may not seem like it, he had two pairs of houndstooth trousers in his tenure. Uh, the first were his brown tartan trousers that he wore in his first two stories, uh, The Power of the Daleks and The Highlanders. Um, the, uh, similar pairs are available on Depop or eBay. Uh, but if you want the exact pattern, you can go to Spoonflower and then also buy a 60s trouser pattern and get sewing. Or you could commission um, one of the costume companies I've mentioned previously to make you a pair. Now, there is only a very light difference in the second two pairs of trousers that can be seen here. Uh, this is the first pair. And... Um, the first pair has a parting in the closure on the waistband in the centre. Um, 
they're both dark houndstooth uh, but then you can see here that even, uh, sorry here that even though it has the same houndstooth pattern and pocket styling um, on this one the pockets are more angled firstly and it now has a band closure over the waist now um, I understand this could be because of just uh, alteration because as someone grows with age they get wider around the waist um, but there is different a different count of hound's teeth between the pocket and the waistband so they are different trousers um, as I said previously in my Hartnell video um, they are available on Depop uh, and eBay but it's going to be hard to get one with a houndstooth pattern big enough uh, as features on the 60s ones um, also a notable um, thing is that the first pair worn by Trout well no, the second pair the first pair of houndstooth trousers worn by Troughton uh, appears to be the same pair worn by Hartnell in season 3 onwards um, as they have the same pocket styling and the same waistband parting. Um, now, we move on to the shirt. Uh, now, I believe there to be two different uh, styles of shirt. Well, not styles, but two different shirts in Troughton's run. Um, his first shirt can be seen here, um, which is a blue short-sleeved baggy large collar cotton shirt um, the buttons you can see are perloid um, single buttons not double buttons like Pertwee's shirts well some of Pertwee's shirts he had a lot um, it has a hidden seam on uh, the centre which is the notable difference between this one and the next one which first appears in the invasion uh, this one you can see the seam line um, on the shirt fastening uh, both were lighter uh, a light blue in colour um, as you can see by this colour picture from the war games um, the invasion shirt seems to be a long sleeved shirt though with uh, as can be seen in this picture and because you can see that Troughton has the arms pulled up they both were long, uh, had massive collars though. Um, short sleeve shirts are easily available off of eBay, but it will be quite difficult to find one with a collar big enough and similar styling without any uh, breast pockets. Um, there is a replica available from Replica Wardrobes. Uh, Bob Mish, Mish, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, runs that site and he does very good replicas. Um, this one is a cream version but I'm sure you could uh, get a light blue version made um, now we move on to the fur coat so Troughton wore this story notably in the Abominable Snowmen and later on it featured in the Five Doctors it is just a plain brown fur coat uh, tied up with a string um, here are some good close up pictures of it uh, relatively similar fur coats are available on Etsy um, but if you just want an easy option you can often find them at like uh, clothing sales and stuff in markets uh, for some reason there seems to be abun an abundance of fur coats in those places although then often relatively old so it might be nicer just to get a new one um, now we're on to the shoes now from my research I've uh, assumed these are what's called suede chucker boots um, they could also be sand boots sand shoes I think is the thing uh, but here's some pictures and he wore the same shoes throughout his entire tenure uh, they didn't change except I think he wore a different pair in Power of the Daleks um, but I couldn't find it any good reference for those. Um, 
so there are cheap cheaper options available uh, but these shoes that Troughton wore were suede and black I presume uh, so these ones are a gloss leather so they are not the right fabric but they are a cheap option which do work um, here's a slightly more expensive option still not the right fabric uh, here is a better option this is from the website Samuel Windsor they do very good uh, shoes uh, of most uh, classic styles and then here is the most accurate replica I found which are the lace up suede chucker boots where you can get them custom size and custom colour uh, this is available from Basil uh, and Basil Inc I think that is uh, who, who sells on Etsy uh, now we move on to the bow ties to my knowledge there were three different bow ties through Trans initial tenure in also um, there is this one which first which only appears on the Power of the Daleks photo shoot and possibly in episode 5 and 6 although it's very hard to see uh, but yeah that's a little world ball which might not actually appear in the show uh, but this is a accurate replica that I found um, on Etsy although it's a bit big as Troughton's uh, bow ties were relatively small uh, but the pattern is relatively accurate uh, his second well no his first proper bow tie which is confirmed on the show is a pattern which features uh, a varying size of white dots and diamonds um, this can also be seen here and this was worn for the first part of his uh, tenure uh, here is the most accurate replica I can find on Etsy um, then there is also another one here which is better size wise um, and then here is another replica that I've found this one seems relatively easy to find uh, something that is close to it on uh, then his second bow tie which fe features mid-season is a paisley pin-on bow tie uh, and this one is pretty hard to find a match for so a uh, possible best bet is just to search Paisley bow ties into Etsy or eBay and see what you can get as close. Um, I know that the two of the bow ties that Troughton wore came in a set that was available in the 60s, a gentleman's bow tie set, but it's almost impossible to find. So. Um, and then here is the third bow tie which is a plain polka dot bow tie um, which featured in the invasion along with the new trousers and jacket and shirt um, and then here's just some replicas that you can find now the braces um, these are most likely a custom piece so there's no point unless you go to Cost Daddy, who I know do them, but they do them with the whole Troughton costume, which is not worth getting. Um, but these braces are definitely a custom piece, so have some fun with them. Uh, the base is a pair of white braces. Well, actually, the first pair is a pair of white braces, as you can tell by the bottoms, but then you can see later on uh, they become a brown base, so I presume that the fabric is something the patterned fabric is something that was put on top of the braces but could switch braces um, but yeah like I said your best bet is to do your own custom uh, and paint the fabric and then place them onto some braces or get someone to make them for you but that would be unnecessarily expensive um, here is oh, here is the brace well some uh, pairs of white braces that you can get which would work for these now we move on to the hats which is one of Troughton's favourite pastimes 
Um, first we have the stovepipe hat. Uh, it is pretty much impossible to get one as long as that features in uh, Power of the Daleks. He also wears it in Underwater Menace and it looks smaller, but that's because he's got the top tucked in to the hat. So it would just be cheating if you got one that size. Um, stovepipe hats are available on eBay, but not the same length, so you'd have to search for a pretty long time on Etsy, uh, most likely to get one the right size. Uh, a few other variations of hat that Troughton worn, uh, his beret, well no it's not a beret, it's, um, I don't know, I'm not going to try and guess at what it's called. Um, but it's a very light hat, uh, blue one that features in the Highlanders, and then his um, light blue woolly hat that features in Fury from the Deep. Uh, handkerchiefs. Uh, now, on the left, I included the pocket uh, from Troughton's first coat in Power of the Dollets because I thought it was a handkerchief, but then since realised that it wasn't and it was just the pocket hanging off. Um, but it's also interesting to note the white sort of mottled effect on the inside of the dangling pocket. Um, on the right you can see a picture of Troughton's um, handkerchief. He had a few through his time but it's very hard to get good screenshots so um, I've just collated the best ones I can. The best bet is just to find a vintage 60s paisley handkerchief uh, red preferably on um, eBay or Etsy. Now, uh, Troughton had one major recorder but was also seen with a few different types of recorders for publicity images and stuff. This was his main one, uh, which was a plain uh, cream recorder uh, with a light blue and darker blue stripes painted around it with uh, green tassels at the end. Um, here are some other recorders that he had for certain publicity images uh, in stories like Power of the Daleks and Fury from the Deep. Uh, lastly, we have the cloak. Now this is just a different rendition of Hartnell's cloak, but this one doesn't have the lion clasps or the velvet collar, so it is just a plain uh, collared cloak. Uh, this features in stories like uh, Power of the Daleks, the Highlanders and also Tomb of the Cybermen and is fairly easily available um, on eBay and Etsy. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if there's any questions you have please let me know in the comments or email me at shabocast at gmail.com um, I am Harry from the Shabocast. Um I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe helps us out. Uh, and I will see you next time for the Season 7 Pertwee costume video.